Good deal. I'm going to go ahead and start sharing my screen. Hey, Andrew. <laughs> oh, I know who that is. <laughs> Hi, Rick. How you doing? Doing fine. How are you? Good. Sick Good. Winter, how about you? Trying to stay warm, man. I'm already sick of winter. We got three of our family. Anybody else on yet? <laughs> got a good number of people. Yeah. Brucey's on. Hi, guys. Christian, is it okay if we go ahead and get started? Do I, do I need to wait any longer? Come on, Alex. Be one of those managers that starts on time. We're just, we're just going to roll with it. We're just going to go. All right, well, thank you guys so much for joining us today just to talk a little bit about uh, Heartland MLS Matrix X, which has just launched. Um, and you've probably heard a little bit about it. Uh, I, I know that Patty Dower has come to a couple of the offices to talk about some of the features. Um, we're gonna do a little bit of hands-on training on it today, really show you kind of a live demo of what all is available and what all you can do and some of the uh, new great features of Matrix X. So um, I think that you'll get some value out of it. Before we get started, I just wanna say, don't freak out. Uh, this is not that much of a change. I really don't think it is. Um, I think that for the most part, uh, this is a, uh, it's kind of a facelift. And then there are some new features that I can't figure out why they weren't in the system to begin with. That's really what we're dealing with. Are there a couple of glitches that you're going to want to be aware of here and there? Yes. Are we still taking some feedback on the program? Yes. Are there some features that aren't available just yet? Yes. So remain patient. Let us know. Feel free to send me an email. I've got a direct line of communication with Rob Wagner up at Heartland MLS. Let me know if there are any features that aren't working correctly, or if you have any questions about any integrations or anything along those lines, let me know. I will relay that message and, uh, and we'll make sure that it gets fixed if possible. Even during this session, since we are in the gathering feedback phase, if there's something that you feel is missing, or if there are any questions that you have, feel free to put them in the chat, and I will, if I don't have an answer for you today, I'll get in touch with Rob, and uh, we'll have a conversation, and see if he can either give me an answer, or if, see, if, see if he can take it to the development team uh, to uh, make a modification. So, does that sound good to everybody? Yeah. Yes. Great. Excellent. I'm glad. We're going to go ahead and log in then. There are a couple of things that uh, I'm going to ask you to do first thing. The first time you log in to Matrix X, there are some important things that you're going to want to uh, you're going to want to do. OK, let's get in here. OK, to get into the new system right now, both of the systems are running parallel. So in order to get into the new system, you will click Matrix X. Like I said, we're still in the feedback gathering phase, making sure that the program is working properly before we completely turn off the old system. If you want to make sure that everything is going to work just right and you're not going to have any hiccups and you don't have time to mess around with learning a new system uh, while you're inputting a listing or doing something like that, you need to click on uh, MLS Matrix. On that note, if you need to input a listing at all, you're going to want to click MLS Matrix because listing input is not available on Matrix X at this time. So we're going to click on Matrix X. So 
first thing right away, you're going to see that the dashboard looks a little bit different. It's not an overwhelming difference, uh, but there are some new features and, uh, and a couple of things that we're going to uh, get into soon. But like I kind of mentioned to you, there are a couple of things that you're going to want to do before you do anything else. The first thing I want you to look at, I want you to make sure that all of your listings are in the system. We're pretty sure that all of the listings are in the system, but I want you to make sure of that and I want you to get used to the way that your listings look. I also want you to make sure that all of the data has come over from the old system and that everything is appearing as it should. So to access your listings, what you'll do you're going to hover over my matrix and you're going to come down to my listings. And when you click on my listings, it's going to give you a new display that you've probably never seen before, but one that gives you a lot of value. So it gives you the my on market counter. Okay. This is going to give you all of your listings, regardless of what the property type is. So in, for, for me, for instance, I've got a couple of residential listings. We've got two land listings showing up and a commercial listing as well. All right. So it, it, it's going to show all of your listings, regardless of property type. Now, what's pretty different and what's pretty cool is it'll also show you how many people have actually looked at the listing in the system. Okay, now keep in mind that right now it's only showing you how many people have accessed the listing on the Matrix X system. It does not count people that are searching on the old system uh, at this time, okay? So if I wanted to see how many people are viewing my listing on 88th Street, it says that there are four agent views here. I can click on this four and it's gonna show me a chart showing me when that activity occurred. So in the new system, on the 19th, I had one person look at it. On the 24th, I had two people look at it. And on the 25th, I had one person look at it. Okay, now you'll see here that you can either, you can toggle between the past four weeks or the past three months. Since the system has only been live since October 6th, it's only gonna show you the data from that point, okay? One other feature that's pretty cool, you can actually see how many people have accessed the listing through the client portal. So I, I can, you, you know, we've always had reverse prospecting. We've always seen who, how uh, the emails have been, how many emails have been sent out that included your listing. But now we can actually see how many people, how many clients have clicked on uh, the uh, you, you can actually see how many clients have opened up that listing after it's been emailed to them. So on Janelle Carbajo's listing on 720 West North Street, we've had one person access it on October 14th and one person access it on October 21st. Okay, so pretty cool. Um, so that's one new great feature. I think it's uh, just this alone, this listing display, this brings value to your clients. It, it allows you to say, look, not only has uh, have I given access to this listing to every agent across the multiple listing service, but I can actually show you how many agents have clicked on it and how many of their clients have accessed it through the MLS system once it's been emailed to them. I think it's a great value add. And this is probably my favorite update uh, that, that has come with this. And again, this is one of those where I can't figure out why they didn't do this in the first place. Why didn't we have this information uh, to begin with? So anyway, I think that it's a, a, it's a great feature. Now, if you wanna boil things down and just see your residential listings, just like before up here where it says my on market counter, you can click on this and you can click on uh, my on market residential listings and you'll see the view that you're, uh, you're used to seeing, okay? All right, do I have any questions about finding your listings? I'm not hearing any, so I'm going to keep going. Feel free to interrupt me. If I want to click on my listing at 10201 West 88th Street, I just click on the MLS number just like I did before. And what I want you to do is I want you to find your listing. I want you to come down. I want you to look at it. 
It looks just like the old listing sheet, really. I want you to kind of look through though and make sure that all of the data uh, came over, okay? It was a migration process and sometimes things get lost in translation. So make sure that you are checking to make, to just to see that everything came over correctly. Alex, when it says uh, you can see how many agents looked at it, it doesn't say which agents? It does not say which agents. Okay. So you'll still need to, you'll, that's where uh, reverse prospecting is still useful. I mean, you're, you're, you, you get to see uh, which agents emailed the listing out and that'll give you the names there, but it will not tell you which agents uh, just clicked on the listing. It's, it's more for statistics, uh, just to show you what kind of activity you're getting. Uh, the MLS, ironically enough, was about the only system uh, that did not give you that information. Um, right. If you went to Zillow, you could always see how many people looked at the listing. Um, and the fact that that wasn't available on MLS is still a surprise to me. Hey, Alex, I think somebody asked, um, what if the same agent looks at that listing a couple of different times throughout the day? Will it count them twice? It's going to count them multiple times. Now, I, I don't know if it's going to count them um, multiple times on that same day. Uh, but it is going to count that person multiple times. Yes. Thank you. Absolutely. Any other questions? And, and Paul, I appreciate it. If, if if I'm missing something in the chat, let me know. Okay. Feel free to feel free to interrupt me. I appreciate that. Okay. So that's the first step. When you log in, you're going to check on your listings. You're going to make sure that all of the data transferred correctly. Next. I want you to make sure that your personal information is correct. Um, this is one of those things where not all of the personal information transferred over. And there, there are actually a few things that just weren't gonna come. So uh, what I want you to do is I want you to uh, come down to, oh, you're gonna click over here at hello, Alex, or it's gonna say hello, Paul, or, or whoever. You'll click on settings, okay? And then from settings, you're going to click on my information. Now, right in here, this is where you're going to make sure that your uh, contact information is correct, okay? So you'll look at that, make sure it all transferred over correctly. You can add any information here that you feel like adding. Your header and footers did not transfer over. So you'll see that mine is still the blue right here, right? So I can select a different banner. I can pick wave green, boardwalk, taking a while for some of these to load. You can see you've got quite a few options here. Now, as of now, oh, and it looks like there for a while, this was not available, but now we've got our brand option available if you scroll down far enough. So once we're done, you can click on preview and there we go. It's all set up, okay? So all I did to do that was click select a different banner image and theme. And then I scrolled down to find the better homes and gardens option. You can of course pick any of those options that you'd like as long as you're not picking another company guys, of course. The other thing that wasn't gonna transfer over is going to be your picture. So if you want a picture on the MLS, you're gonna click on upload photo and select your photo just like you would any uh, on any other platform. Next, you can select your, uh, your personal information that you want to appear. So I've got Alex Gehring, BHG Kansas City Homes, alexg at kansascityhomes.com. I'm gonna come down here and select my cell phone number and my office number as well. Of course, this isn't actually my office number. I need to fix that. And you can see that it went ahead and updated all of those. And this is what the print header is going to look like. It always gives you a preview of that too. So really, this screen has not changed a whole lot at all. I just want you all to know that this information did not transfer over. So you're going to have to do it again that first time that you log in. Okay, next, same thing. Oh, let me save this before I go. 
Your email signature is another one that wasn't going to transfer over. So you're going to want to update your email signature. Now, one thing that drives me crazy about uh, a lot of you have probably been through uh, a couple of classes where we talk about HTML signatures and using signature platforms like mysignature.io to create a fancy looking signature. One thing that drives me a little bit crazy is that we are not able to use HTML signatures uh, in the matrix system. Um, I've, I've gotten a variety of uh, answers as to why that's not the case, but what it boils down to is that CoreLogic, our vendor, uh, is concerned about uh, security uh, in allowing HTML signatures to, to be in the, pro, in, the, uh, in the system. So as of now, that's not an option. You can always paste your HTML signature in here and then make some modifications. It just isn't going to show up all pretty uh, like some of the other HTML platforms do. If you have no idea what I'm talking about when I'm talking about an HTML signature, uh, what that is is when you've got a uh, you know you've got a picture, maybe you've got your logo, uh, and it, it's lots of different colors, and it's just a really attractive signature, right? It isn't just your standard three or four line signature line. Okay, very good. Next, um, really that that's pretty much it. The only other thing that I want you to make sure of is that when you hover over my matrix, and we're, we're going to really get into this, I want you to look at your saved searches, okay? Your saved searches should have transferred over, okay? So we're going to jump into, uh, we'll talk about saved searches later. We're going to go back to the dashboard for now and look at some of the other uh, differences in terms of functionality here and how the searching is going to work. There are some changes, okay? The first thing you're going to notice is that right here, you've got a handy dandy quick search option right built into the matrix dashboard. Um, so if there's a, a street address that I have and I just want to quickly pull something up, I can type it in right here. You can always use the shorthand uh, key bar over up here as well. Um, one thing to know, they are making this even easier to use in future updates. Uh, they're really trying to make it be more like a Google search uh, so that it, it recognizes more standard text than uh, just knowing how to type it in. You can type just about anything in and it'll work. That's not here quite yet. You still have to use the, uh, if you're a big user of this bar, uh, you still have to use the, the uh the same kind of shorthand that you used before. But if you don't know that shorthand or if you don't want to mess with that, you have this search bar right here and it makes things really easy, okay? One thing that's missing, if you hover over search and you hover over residential, you'll see that there are two options that aren't there anymore. Option number one that isn't there anymore is the MLS search, uh, the MLS number search option. You cannot just click on a button and then have a, a text bar show up letting you type in multiple MLS numbers. But you are able to do that right here in this field, okay? So where you've got this search bar that's on your dashboard, you can type in multiple MLS numbers right there separated by a comma just like you always did. You'll click on search and you're going to have both of those listings appear, okay? So that's really simple. Next, if I just want to do an address search, you'll see that there's no address search button either. If I want to do an address search for multiple addresses, not just one, you could just do one over here. If I want it for multiple addresses, I'm going to click on residential quick, okay? And you'll see that this all looks different, but this is the way that you would search for multiple addresses right here, right below the map search radius area where you can make sure that your map is selected. You've got options to add, I think that it's up to nine addresses, okay? And so you've got this option right here to type in a street number, a directional, and a street name. Um, and uh, you can pull it up just like you pulled the address search before, okay? So they really tried to consolidate uh, our, our, our search buttons so that we didn't have so many options, okay? but all of the same functionality is available. All right, 
So you'll see that this obviously looks pretty different. I'm going to reset my search so that I don't have all of those there. OK, so you'll see that all of this really looks pretty different, doesn't it? Um, a, a, lot, a lot of differences here. The biggest difference is that in some of these fields, we don't have the scroll bar. To be honest with you, I don't like it. I wish that I had the ability to scroll through and find them. Um, the reason for that, you're about ready to see it. Um, when I want to search for Spring Hill and I start typing, oh, it's not doing it now. That's nice. Uh, you, you, oh, it's because I actually turned it off. You need to turn off autofill. It, it's really obnoxious. Uh, when you start typing, sometimes it's going to try to bring up a, a, you guys know what I'm talking about. It'll try to bring up some options that you've typed in before, and it'll cover up the options that it, uh, that are available. It's really obnoxious. So you'll want to turn off autofill if that's happening to you. But there you go. So if I want to search for uh, Spring Hill and Woodland Ridge, uh, that's what I would do right there. If I want to see actives, pendings, show for backups, and solds in Woodland Ridge, you'll see that the date range has moved over here. OK? So if I want to only see solds that are in the last 90 days, I would do 0 to 90 days in this field. And then I could scroll down and click results just like I always have. So you'll remember that previously, if you wanted the sold days back option, that was over here in this area, OK? Now it's moved to be next to the statuses, all right? So I think that's something we can get used to pretty, pretty easily. Alex, how do you turn off that autofill you were talking about? Uh, that's going to be in your browser settings. It'll depend on which browser you're using, but you would go into, like if it was Chrome, you click on the dot, dot, dot up here. You would click on settings and you would find the autofill option and just turn it off. Okay. What, what they need to do is they need to fix that in the back end because they can make it so that and, and I think I put in a ticket for it, so I'm hoping that that'll get updated fairly soon. But they just need to make it, they, they can program it so that the autofill fields aren't working anymore. I, I'm hoping that that'll get done soon because otherwise people aren't going to want to use the system. It'll drive you batty. Okay. Thanks. All right. So the other thing you're going to notice, they added some color. <laughs> and they've, they've uh, moved away from the one uh, letter statuses, okay? Um, just to make it a little bit more clear for newer people what it is we're seeing. But we've got actives, pendings, and solds, and you'll see that they're color-coded as well. So they, they've really tried to make it a slightly more attractive system. There are a couple of things here that are missing that you're going to notice, because uh, I know that a lot of us use Cloud CMA a lot, and certainly a lot of us are using uh, showing time and the uh, showing cart feature of that. But what you'll notice is when I select all of these, I do not have a cloud CMA option or a showing time, showing time option down here like I do on the old system. I want you all to know that this is coming and uh, that's a pending ticket. And I'm hoping that that'll be changed uh, here in the next couple of weeks, but it will certainly be live come December 1st. Uh, when this is the um, only live system, okay? So when you come in here, do not worry about the fact that there is no cloud CMA or showing cart option. Uh, that will be available uh, in, in short, uh, it'll be available shortly, okay? Any other questions about what you're seeing here? I'm not hearing any. All right, great. So now we're going to come back to the dashboard. There are a couple of things that you can do on the dash on some of the more standard uh, dashboard tools that we weren't available that we, we were not able to do previously. Um, and this is another one of those where I have no idea why the system, the old system was built the way that it was. But I don't know if we have any other brokers um, on the call. But one thing that we were not able to do before with the market watch option, you can now come into customize and build a more specific search 
but you can also put in your office code and see just your office's listings showing up in the market watch widget, okay? So right now I've got mine show up to, uh, I've got mine set up to show the activity in the Blue Valley office. And there you go. So over the last three days, we had four go pending over the weekend. Good job, guys. And one come on in pre-MLS. So that's pretty good. And we, we've had some more solds too, but Terry's been out of town. So I don't know that we've got them processing just yet, but we'll get, we'll get them done soon. All right. So anyway, I thought that was pretty cool. Same thing with the hot sheets. There are some additional options now with the hot sheets. You can do a more robust search um, when, you're, when you're setting those up. Ultimately, the screen to set those up is exactly the same as it used to be, okay? Very good. All right. There's one tool that, uh, that I don't know if we've really been making uh, best use of it yet, because um, I, I don't know that it's been explained very well previously. How many of, is anybody using the concierge part of Matrix? Anybody familiar with that and how that works? I'm not seeing anybody, uh, anybody indicating that they use it often. Is there anybody out there that uses it? Feel free to unmute. All right. Sounds like we don't have very many people using the uh, concierge option. So I'm going to kind of walk you through what that is because it plays a, it's, it is a more present part of this new system. If it's not something that you want to use, you certainly don't have to. We're going to build out a search and then I'll show you what concierge is and how it works. Okay. Let's say that I want to set up a search for, I'm just gonna do my neighborhood. I'll do zero to 180, that'll be fine. to be Forest Hills. Single family, and then the one in Olathe. People put in the wrong one all the time. There we go, I like that better. Okay, so now uh, I'm, I'm just pulling up my subdivision and I'm gonna set up an auto email uh, to let me know every time something comes on the market uh, in my subdivision, okay? So just like before, I would click on results and all of these would show up. I see my actives, my show for backups, my pendings, my solds, right? So nothing new there. If I want to create a auto email, again, nothing new. I'm just gonna, uh, and actually I don't even need to do the all. I would go to save and click on new auto email. I'm gonna select myself here. I put in my subject line. You can edit your welcome email and your recurring email just like you used to. Now, this is where concierge mode comes in. As I scroll down here, I'm hearing some extra sound. I think we're good. Okay. As I scroll down here just a little bit, I can click on uh, enable concierge mode. Okay. Now, when I click on that, it's going to give me a new button. You'll see, you'll see down here when concierge mode isn't set up, it'll just say save. As soon as I mark enable concierge mode, it's going to say save, go to approvals. Okay. Now, when I click on that, I'm able to actually select the listings within this system or within this search that I want to send to the client, okay? So if there are certain things that don't actually make sense, um, if, if I'm sending this to a buyer and uh, range pricing is turned on and you don't wanna send them a listing that is showing up in their search, but you're pretty sure that the seller wouldn't actually accept 
except the price that they're putting into range pricing, you can just choose not to select that listing uh, for one reason or another. Or if you know that you already sent it to them and they told you they hated it and have no interest. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and mark that I wanna send all of them, okay? So I would click all, but I'm gonna deselect a couple of these. And then when I uh, come down and click done, or I would click on approve selected is actually what I would click. And then as soon as I click approve selected, it's gonna send those 49 listings that were selected and it will not send them these ones that I did not select, okay? So these remain in my concierge cart, all right? Does that make sense to everybody? This was a feature that a lot of people were asking for. Um, it's not something that I've really used heavily. Um, typically, uh, when I'm setting somebody up for a search, I'm using our in-house system because um, I can do the same thing there largely, right? But with this, uh, th this is an option to withhold some listings if, if you don't feel like it actually meets their needs or if you really want to uh, you know, you go through the pictures and offer a very tailored uh, selection of listings, this is a way that you can do that. Now, the reason why I say it is a uh, more integrated part of the new system is because when I come to the dashboard, there is an option here that says concierge, um, and they have this here to make sure that uh, none of these lists, as, as new listings meet the criteria in that safe search, in order for your client to receive them, you're going to have to approve them. So I would need to come in here. It says, uh, as soon as I would open it up, it says concierge, six listings need your approval. I'll click on Garing Alex because that's the client that needs uh, needs the uh, approval on these listings. And if I decide that I want to approve them, I can mark the ones that I want to approve. Sure, I'll go ahead and send myself these three. And then if I've got three here that I'm never gonna send them because it just doesn't make sense, I would mark these three and I would click on reject. And now my concierge box is empty, okay? So you've got a new concierge widget on your dashboard. And when you see that, now hopefully you'll you'll have some understanding of of what that is. Okay. All right. So, does anybody have any questions so far? I'm moving through some of this fairly quickly. Does anybody feel like things look strange, or they have any questions about anything that I've gone through yet? Nope. Sounds good. Well, good. For the most part, it's it's pretty simple. There, are, the the changes are not that drastic. Um, for me, to be honest with you, I used the MLS search, uh, like when I the MLS number search quite a bit. So when I didn't see that as an option, I was concerned until I figured out that I could just do the same exact thing with this MLS number search in the search bar right here. Um, so that's that's good. All right, we're gonna go ahead and move on. The rest of the system works mostly the same way, just with a couple of uh, different tweaks on the way it looks. So in terms of statistics, if, you, if you're somebody that's big on the statistics option within, within MLS, you can do the exact same thing that you did before uh, with this system, and it works largely, largely the same way. You'll see that things are just in different places. That's pretty much what it boils down to. But for the most part, it works the same way. When we click on finance, this has all been cleaned up just a little bit, so your calculators are all still there, um, but you know they've they've just made the the system look pretty much the same. Some of these they need to take off because a lot of them don't actually make any sense or they're not relevant to today's market. The realist button it works exactly the same, and there's not really a whole lot of a change, but you'll see that it's uh, it's cosmetically a little bit more attractive than it used to be. Okay. But for the most part, it works the same way. A little zoom toolbar keeps getting in the way. The one thing that uh, is not available right now on Matrix X is input. That's not an option yet. That will be live come December 1st. You can't have two sources for input um, at the same time. Okay, so for right now, that's not live. Okay, the, the last thing um, that's, that's new, when you click on market reports, 
uh, it will give you an agent production report. And this wasn't really available before in an easy way. But now when you click on market reports, you can click on agent production report. It's automatically going to do a year to date report. You'll click on generate. And it's going to give you a PDF of your activity for year to date, okay? And it, it really boils it down. So if you're uh, right now, especially if you're if you're just now getting into business planning, you're you're maybe a little bit behind. So you're going to want to start really looking at uh, at doing some business planning, right? Um, but if if you if you're if you haven't done it yet, this is a great tool for you to really see uh, what you've done on MLS. Obviously, we've got the reporting option on KCH agent as well. But if you want to pull up MLS too, I know that especially um, if you're a, a, a team member um, and you want to be able to see your secondary, uh, if you're the second agent on listings, this is still going to count that. If, if you want to see that kind of thing, uh, you're going to want to use this report. It, it's really nice. With the KCH agent uh, reporting that we have, it's a little bit trickier if you are a team member because um, a lot of times it'll just say you haven't done any business because a lot of it falls under the team lead. But ultimately, this is really a, a, a nice report. It's not super attractive. It's all numbers, but uh, it's all good information to have. And it's a nice new feature, okay? Links are all the same that they used to be. Okay, does anybody have any questions? That really boils down uh, what all is available on Matrix X. Uh, this, is, this is what it looks like. It, it works largely in the same way with some new features. So does anybody have any questions? Uh, is there a function that you uh, use a lot with MLS that you want to see demoed here today um, and, and make sure that it works properly? Um, or do you have any feedback on the way that the system looks or performs? Alex? Yes. This is Jan Elward Plaza office. Um, one question, when you're setting up your signature and your banner and all uh -huh. that, is there a way in there where you could set it up where it rotates or a seasonal kind of a thing? Um, or is it just you go in randomly and you can change it as often as you want? I, I think you're just going to need to go in there and change it as often as, as you need it changed. I don't know that there's a seasonal option. I might be wrong on that. Is that something you could do on the old system and I just didn't know it? No. No, I just, I was wondering, I mean, since they're adding stuff, if that was something they put on there. No I think that's a cool idea. I might, I might ask Rob if that's a possibility um, because certainly as a, I mean, like you said, if this, as the seasons change or, or anything like that, it'd be kind of fun to schedule changes. Um, but, but no, as of right now, uh, you're going to need to go in and, and change that anytime you need to modify your signature. Does anybody else have a question? Alex, it's Carol Chartrand. Hi, Carol. Bullet Boulevard office. Um, so I, I came in just a little bit late. Hopefully you haven't covered this, but there used to be shortcuts to different uh, websites like Heartland MLS, the forms, the RPR, all sure. of that on this uh, dashboard landing page. Where are all those now? So all of those are going to be there. Right now, when you click on links, you only have two options, and it's the Heartland dashboard and then our HMLS rules and regulations. But eventually, all of those links are going to be populated um, just like they are currently with this. The reason why they aren't there right now is because a lot of uh, those programs, the reason why we have them there is because we have single sign-on enabled. We can't have single sign-on enabled uh, with two different systems at the same time. Um, so that's why you're not seeing them uh, currently. But come December 1st, that's one of those other things that will be, uh, that, that'll show up again, okay? It's a good question. Anybody else? Yes. I heard somebody say yes. Who said that? 
you've had a couple of people ask in chat about the roster and the um oh sure sure i need to let me pull up the chat i feel like i'm missing stuff is there a roster somewhere yes so if i want to click on search i would come down to member okay and that's where you'll search for the uh for an agent good question Karen, did you say that you had a question as well? I have a question. With the old system, when you created your custom print reports, you could not add a picture. Can you add a picture now? When you created your custom print reports, you could add a You could not. OK. I'm not actually sure. We're talking about your custom print reports. Can you, Correct. can you, what are we talking about with that? Your I custom apologize. print reports. Somebody you, help me. You used to be able to choose exactly what you wanted on your print reports. Like for instance, agent date sold, and you could include a picture, but you could not include a picture. Can you do that now? Oh, yep. Yes. You, I, let me, let me look really quick. So, so walk, walk me through what it is that you are trying. Uh, maybe this is something that I haven't used, so I apologize. So you're just talking about when you're, when you're printing what kind of a report? You used to be able to design a custom print report. Let's see. Was that in my matrix? I, I don't know whether where it was without uh, my CMA listings. There was a way to design, you know how, how we choose out to print reports. We've got one page reports, we've got short reports. You, there was a, a feature where you could design your own report. Oh, okay, I gotcha. Now I never did that obviously by my, uh, by <laughs> you can tell by how confused I was just now. Um, let me see if that's an option under settings. Um, so you've got your custom exports custom displays. Yeah, so this is where you would do that. Right. So yeah, it would be under the, so again, under the Hello Alex, you would click on settings and then you would click on custom displays and you would build your own. Let me see if there's an option for a photo. And you're talking about a property photo? Correct, precisely. There you go. So I could add there's a- not. Oh, photo. Photos. Icon photo. You see, so you can do the, the icon, uh, photo grid, so you can add all of the pictures if you wanted to. Um, yeah, there you they go. didn't have that there before. Okay, so let's move that over really fast. Um, let, me, let me add a couple of other things as well. We'll add above square feet address. All right, we're just going to add those fields and we'll save it. Um, if I do a quick search in Spring Hill, all right. So up here, now that I've created that, I can come up here to my picture test, click on it, and there you go. Yep. So it's giving okay. me all of the pictures there. That's awesome. That's exactly what I was looking for. Okay, good. I'm glad that I figured that out. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that it took me a second. <laughs> Anybody else have a question? Anything else that you guys want to see work within this new system? Alex, would you recommend we start using this Matrix X now or later December 1st when we're able to input um, listings? Does Good it matter? Question. 
Yeah, I want you to log into it now. Um, okay. The, the reason anything. is, I, yeah, I want you to make sure that it's all set up and ready to go. Get in, make sure that your listings are all there. Make sure that the data transferred correctly. Make sure that all of your personal information is there. Your right. signature is there. Your header and footer is there. And then just start familiarizing yourself with the system so that come December 1st, it, it isn't a big shock. Um, what I would recommend is trying to get... Uh, comfortable enough with this system that the only reason why you would go into the old system is for listing entry. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So hopefully uh, by uh, the second week of November, you're using Matrix X for all of your searching and you're only coming into the old system for data entry. Okay. <clears throat> so December 1st, the old system will be gone. December 1st, the old system will be gone. So right. you, you want to be completely comfortable with this system as soon as, as, soon as possible. Cool. All um, right, great. Thank you. Okay. And yep. again, as you're exploring, as you're testing things out, if something's not working properly or if you feel like something's, something's wrong or missing, reach out, let us know, and we will do everything we can to get it corrected. Um, okay. CoreLogic's working really hard and, and has been updating things pretty rapidly for us. Um, so just, just tell us. You and, want us to notify you or Patty or does it matter? You can notify me and I can run interference, whatever works. I'm, I'm also on the board of MLS. Uh, okay. So, uh, I mean, if of you, if you, you get this, <laughs> if you get this over to me, I can, I can get it in the right hands really quickly. Also, it's good for me to be able to relay some of the feedback onto the other uh, officers. Sure, okay. Sure. All right. Great. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thanks, Alex. You're welcome. Any other questions? Are we all done? I didn't have Thank anything you. else. Thank you, Alex. Absolutely. Thank Thanks, you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.